from sallysmeo.com and in this tutorial I'm going to take you step by step to learn how to make the Betty bag. I'm confident that you'll find lots of uses for this pattern. Inside is a zipper mesh pocket, removable dividers, elastic one ounce bottle holders, and an organizer for brushes or cords. I designed this pattern to be used as a travel organizer for toiletries, cosmetics, essential oils, and more. It would also make a great lunch bag or small cooler without the organizer or bottle holders. I know all the pockets, zippers, mesh, and other components of this bag may seem overwhelming. However, the entire project has been designed as beginner friendly as possible and there is a picture for nearly every step of the paper pattern in addition to this video. And when we write our instructions, we break them down into bite-sized pieces so it's easy to follow along. So be sure to purchase the paper pattern before taking this class. And the pattern and supplies can be purchased from our website or you can request them at your local quilt shop. Please remember to shop local whenever you can. So grab your supplies and let's get started. The finished size is 10 inches wide, 5 inches high, and 8 inches deep. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover and also review the pattern corrections page on our website just to make sure that you have the most current version of the instructions. Then you'll refer to your pattern for all of the cutting instructions. There are a lot of pieces in this pattern, so feel free to skip any of the pockets, organizer, or dividers to make this bag more beginner friendly or to adapt it to your liking. Also, it may be helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of the piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. Mesh fabric is a great addition to bags because it's lightweight, doesn't add bulk, it's stretchy, breathable, and easy to see through. When cutting your mesh, make sure the stretch is along the width so your pocket is able to stretch when your items are inside. We have a great selection of mesh on our website so you can coordinate with your materials for a professional look. Remember that all of your supplies can be purchased conveniently from our website or request them at your local shop. Please remember to shop local whenever you can. The first step is to fuse interfacing to coordinating pieces. If you're using cork fabric, faux leather, laminated cotton, or wax canvas for the main fabric, skip this next instruction. Start by centering and fusing your interfacing to the wrong side of coordinating main fabric piece D and piece E. I'm using a wool pressing mat and Oliso mini project iron. This 100% wool pressing mat absorbs steam so it's essentially pressing both sides at once. These are very convenient to keep close to your sewing machine or even in your bedroom to give clothing a quick press. They're also very handy for travel. Next, for all fabric types, center and fuse interfacing to the wrong side of coordinating lining pieces F and G. With right sides up, position main fabric piece A, outer panel, over coordinating foam, and align all edges. Repeat for main fabric piece B, which is your top flap, and main fabric piece C, your base, and one lining piece F for the organizer. Apply basting spray to the wrong side of your fabric or attach sewing clips to hold the layers together. Next, we'll head over to the machine. I'm going to be working on the Baby Lock Accomplish. I love this machine for all sewing purposes. It can handle sewing through thicker projects while maintaining a quality stitch. Set your machine to a five millimeter or longer stitch length for any basting throughout this project. Now we're going to baste each of the fabrics to the foam with a quarter inch seam allowance around all edges. A walking foot or Teflon foot will help if you're sewing with cork, faux leather, laminated cotton, or wax canvas. I just have the standard foot on my machine because I'm just using 100% cotton canvas fabric. Continue basting, then set aside remaining foam pieces J and K for later. Also, if your machine has the ability to adjust the presser foot pressure, you can reduce the pressure of your foot so it's not pushing your fabric as you sew. If you're using cork or faux leather, 
with wrong sides together, fold each length side of piece E, which is your handle, to the center and finger press. Also, you could use basting tape or clips to hold in place. If you're using cotton, laminated cotton, or wax canvas, you'll fold the piece with wrong sides together, matching the length sides to the center, and press. Then you're going to fold in half again with wrong sides together and press. Set your machine to a 3.5 millimeter stitch length for any top stitching throughout this project. Top stitch each length side with an eighth inch seam allowance. If using cork or faux leather, top stitch each long side again with a half inch seam allowance. With right sides up, center piece E on top of piece B so the short raw edges are even with the side edges. The handle will lift up in the middle. Clip in place. Sew each short end of your handle according to the pattern to secure it in place. If desired, top stitch an X inside the rectangle for reinforcement. The next step is to assemble the organizer. Feel free to skip this section if you don't want to add an organizer to your bag. Align the top raw edge of piece N along the center of piece Q. Fold the elastic in half, encasing the raw edge of your mesh, clip in place, and stretch the elastic as you go. Top stitch your elastic in place 3 8 inch from the folded edge. With right sides up, position piece N on top of piece F with the foam attached, aligning the sides and bottom edge. Set your machine to a 2.5 millimeter stitch length for any piecing throughout this project. Top stitch mesh pocket in place an eighth inch from the sides and bottom, making sure that the edges are aligned. On the right side of piece F with the foam attached, mark the lines according to the pattern. I recommend using your cutting mat to measure and mark accurately. Next, on the right side of piece P, mark the lines according to your pattern. Then, with right sides up, position your elastic below the horizontal line on your organizer panel. Align the raw side edges, then clip the ends in place. Next, you'll align the corresponding marks from left to right and top stitch each of the vertical marks on the elastic. The elastic will lift up between the marks. With right sides together, sew both piece G together along the short sides with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Turn piece G right side out, top stitch a quarter inch from each seam. With right sides together, center one long edge of piece G along the left raw edge of your organizer. Baste in place an eighth inch from the left raw edge. Make sure that the elastic is out of the way as you sew. Position the circle template included with the pattern in one corner of your organizer with the foam. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge. Cut a long marked line to round the corner. Repeat for the remaining corners and for your remaining piece F organizer. With right sides together, align all edges of both piece F. Sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving about three inches unsewn along the left edge with the extension attached. Snip the curved corners. Turn the assembled organizer right side out by pushing the fabric through the unsewn section. You can use a turning tool to help smooth out the corners. Turn the raw edges of the opening to the wrong side and pin in place. Top stitch an eighth inch from the seam around the entire outer edge of the organizer, which will also close up that unsewn section. Skip the instructions for the bottle holders if you don't wish to add those to your bag, or also you can skip the instructions for the Velcro if you don't wish to add dividers to your bag. Fold lining piece A inner panel in half to find the center. On the right side, mark the lines according to the pattern. Then on the right side of piece O elastic, mark the lines according to the pattern. Fold each short edge of the elastic a quarter inch to the wrong side and top stitch an eighth inch from each fold to hold in place. With right sides up, position the elastic below the horizontal line on the inner panel. Align the folded side edges and corresponding marks from left to right. The elastic will lift up between the marks. Top stitch each of the vertical marks on the elastic and over the eighth inch top stitching on the ends. Make sure to backstitch. 
because when you're adding in essential oil bottles, spools, or other small items, there's going to be a lot of stress on these areas, so make sure they're stitched down tightly. Separate each piece of Velcro. Notice that there is a hook side and a loop side. Take four of the loop pieces and set the rest aside. With right sides up, center one loop piece according to the pattern on your inner panel. Use pins or a small piece of basting tape to hold each piece in place. Top stitch an eighth inch from all edges on each loop piece, making sure to back stitch. The next step is to assemble the dividers. Skip to the next section of instructions if you don't want to add dividers to your bag. Press each height edge of piece H and both piece I a half inch to the wrong side. I like to use a hot ruler or a hot hammer for this step. Simply place the hot ruler against the wrong side and fold your fabric up to meet the half inch mark. A hot ruler is safe to use your iron over so you can get a perfect half inch hem. Next, with right sides together, fold piece H in half matching the long edges. Then with right sides together, fold each piece I in half matching the short edges. Sew raw edges together with a half inch seam allowance on each divider. Turn piece H and both piece I right sides out and press. Insert piece J into piece H so it's against the wrong side and centered. There should be about three quarters of an inch of fabric on each short side without any foam. Insert one piece K into each piece I in the same manner. Top stitch an eighth inch from all four sides of piece H and both piece I to close the sides and keep the foam in place. Take the remaining two loop pieces of Velcro. With right sides up, center the loop pieces according to the pattern on piece H. Top stitch an eighth inch from all edges of the Velcro pieces, making sure to back stitch. Take your remaining hook pieces of Velcro. Turn piece H to the opposite side of the Velcro already attached. With right sides up, center one hook piece along each short edge of piece H and both piece I. Top stitch an eighth inch from all edges on each piece of Velcro, making sure to back stitch. Set the assembled dividers aside. The next step is to assemble the mesh pocket. Again, you can skip to the next section of instructions if you don't want to add a mesh pocket to your bag. With wrong sides together, center the top edge of your zipper along the top edge of piece L. If you're right-handed, the zipper should open towards the right. If you're left-handed, the zipper should open towards the left. Clip in place. Whenever I sew through mesh, I like to set my machine to a two millimeter stitch length for any piecing or top stitching of the mesh. Attach a zipper foot or narrow foot to your machine. Sew together along the top with a quarter inch seam allowance. The shorter stitch length will help ensure that the mesh is caught in the seam. Also, you can choose a thread color to match your zipper if you don't want the stitching to stand out. Next, press the mesh away from your zipper Top stitch an eighth inch from the long edge of the zipper. With wrong sides together, center the bottom edge of the zipper along the top long edge of your zipper pocket bottom. Sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Press the zipper pocket bottom away from the zipper and top stitch an eighth inch from the long edge of the zipper. With right sides up, place the assembled zipper pocket on top of lining piece B, which is your top flap, aligning the top and side edges. Clip in place. Top stitch in place an eighth inch from the raw edges. Make sure to move the zipper pull out of the way if needed. I'm using Sally Tomato zippers by the yard. These zippers have a nylon coil which appears to be metal. However, the nylon coil makes them safe and easy to cut and sew over. Choose from a wide variety on our website for a designer look. After sewing, trim any excess mesh even with the edges. Position the circle template found in the pattern in each corner of main piece B and lining piece B. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge. Cut along the mark line to round each corner. Sandwich one end of the double slide zipper in between both piece D 
aligning the short raw edges. The right side of main piece D will be against the right side of the zipper, and the right side of lining piece D will be against the wrong side of zipper. Sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold each piece D away from the zipper and press. Then top stitch piece D a quarter inch from the seam. Next, you repeat the same process to attach and top stitch the remaining short raw edge of piece D to the opposite end of the zipper. This will create a loop and finish off the raw ends of your zipper and the extension piece. Fold the prepared top zipper in half to find the front and back center. You can mark the center with a removable pen, chalk, or a pin. Fold main piece B and lining piece B in half to find the front and back center. With right sides together, match the front center of the zipper with the front center of main piece B. Also, match the back centers and align the raw edges. Use lots of sewing clips to hold in place. Sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Use a zipper foot or narrow foot to help maintain your seam allowance. Also, move the zipper pulls out of the way as you sew. A stiletto can really help for going around the corners in those hard to hold areas. It's almost like a third hand to help you while sewing. It can take a little practice to get used to sewing with a stiletto, but it is very handy. I find myself using it and reaching for it all the time when I'm bag making. After sewing, snip the corners of the zipper tape to help it lay flat. Just be careful not to cut through the stitches. Place the right side of lining piece B against the right side of main piece B and wrong side of zipper, with the pocket zipper positioned opposite of the zipper extension piece D. Sew together with 3 8 inch seam allowance, leaving about 5 inches unsewn along one straight edge. Turn the assembled flap right side out by pushing the fabric through the unsewn section. Turn the raw edges of the unsewn section to the wrong side, pin in place. Top stitch the flap an eighth inch from the seam. It can be a bit bulky sewing over the handle and the zipper attached to the mesh pocket, so be sure to slow down or even turn the hand wheel of the machine towards you while you sew over those components. With right sides together, match the short sides of main piece A, sew together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. If desired, finger press the seam open and top stitch a quarter inch from each side of the seam to help compress the foam. With right sides together, match short edges of the lining piece A, sew together with three quarters of an inch seam. Trim the seam to a quarter inch wide after sewing. Position the circle template in each corner of main piece C and lining piece C, which are your base pieces. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge and cut along the marked lines to round the corners. Fold main piece A outer panel in half to find the front and back center. Note that the seam on the outer panel is the back center, so it may be helpful to mark which is the front and the back on the wrong side. Repeat to find the front and back center on the lining piece, your inner panel. Again, it may be helpful to mark that the seam on the inner panel is the front center this time. Repeat for main piece C, your base and lining piece C, base. With right sides together, match the center marks on main base with the center marks on the outer panel and align the raw edges. Sew around the entire base with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Use a lot of sewing clips to hold the layers together and it's easiest to sew the step with the base against the bed of the sewing machine. If needed, you can snip the curves to help relax the fabric. After sewing, trim some of the bulk from each corner. With the right side of the double slide zipper against the right side of the outer panel, repeat the same process to attach the top flap to the top edge of the outer panel. This time, it's easiest to sew with the outer panel against the bed of the sewing machine. Take your time sewing the step. With right sides together, match center marks on the lining base with center marks on the inner panel and align the raw edges 
with the elastic nearest to the base. Sew around the entire base with a half inch seam allowance. After sewing, trim the seam to a quarter inch wide. Unzip the top flap all the way. With right sides together, align the raw edge of the assembled organizer along the back center of the outer panel. The mesh pockets should be facing each other. Base the organizer in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. With right sides together, put the assembled lining inside the assembled exterior, aligning the center marks and the raw edges, and make sure that the inner panel seam is at the front. Sew the top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance, leaving about 6 inches unsewn along the back side. Be conscious of your zipper pull as you sew. Turn the bag right side out by pushing the exterior and lining through the unsewn section. Push the lining down into the exterior, turn the raw edges of the unsewn section to the wrong side, and pin in place. Top stitch around the top edge with an 8 inch seam allowance. You can use your fingers to roll the top seam to make sure the top edge is tight and flat before you top stitch. This top stitching will also close up the turning hole. Now that your bag is complete, you're ready to fill it up with notions, cosmetics, art supplies, electronics, and more. The mesh zipper pocket is great for flat items you need easy access to. The organizer is great for tools, brushes, pens, or cords. Insert essential oils, spools, or other small items into the stretchy elastic bottle holders. Attach the center divider with Velcro to allow for two compartments inside your bag, or add the side dividers for additional compartments for optimal organization. There's so much you can store inside, we hope this will become one of your go-to bags. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the class and I hope you're feeling accomplished and proud because you've created such a beautiful bag. I bet you're excited to start filling up your bag and I truly hope that you enjoyed this class and have learned lots of tips about working with zippers, mesh, elastic, and other types of fabrics. Show off your Betty bag and share what you're storing inside with hashtag SallyTomato and hashtag BettyBag on Instagram and Facebook. We'd love to see your version of this pattern. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials. We'll see you next time.